since this is another organ of your body, your skin, why would you put something on your skin that you wouldn't put in your mouth? Does it make any sense? If you don't put it in your mouth, you can't eat it, you don't put it on your skin. You know, this is what I have found through research over, for the last 26 to 28 years. This is what scientific studies have been out there, what universities have reported on, what individual doctors that have done their own research, scientists, and like I say, universities from all over the world. There is so much information out there it amazes me how many people don't want to know. They just don't. I mean, they don't. I go into a house and a woman, let's say for an example, she is very interested. She's done some research. Okay? She looks it up herself. She sees how important it is and calls me and starts talking to me about it and trying to find a way that I can help her convince her husband to at least sit down and listen. I do not understand what it is about men that think that they have so much macho in them that they're not going to get sick. Well, let me tell you what. Go down to the hospital and look in the cancer wards and look at the people in there with all kinds. Well, not just cancer, but there's all kinds of diseases linked to contaminants found in tap water. That's why I said you can go to EPA.gov and look up the National Drinking Water Standards, what's in the water, what they allow in the water, and what they cause, what can happen over ingesting them for a long period of time. And it's almost blood disease, cancers, liver disease, blue baby syndrome, all thyroid problems, all kinds of stuff. So God did not put that water on this earth with all those contaminants in it. Man made them, put them in. God put water here to sustain life or the creator, however you believe. Put the water here to sustain life with the natural minerals in it. Man put all these man-made chemicals in it. And that is what's disrupting life cycle. Not just the humans. I mean, there's enough things on the television to show you where it's uh, uh, disrupting all life cycles. Okay? Plants, you go out here and look at the chemicals that come from the, uh, these uh, factories out here, and they come from the air. Okay? You go out around in factories and look. All the tops of the trees are burnt. Okay? The stuff goes in, then into the ground, then in the aquifers. Then they put a well down there, suck it up, and send it back to us. Same with leach lines of septic tanks. Same with all the herbicides, pesticides, everything they put on golf courses all around there. All of this soaks down into the, into the uh, aquifers. That's why when looking for a water system, you want to make sure that it's going to remove okay, heavy metals. Of course, you want something that makes sure it's going to sterilize, kill live algae, fungi, and bacteria. You want to make sure you remove chlorine and trihalomethanes. Fluoride. When you go to healthywaterman.com, the easiest way I can show you, it will show you on there the actual system and what you want, what, what you really want to look for in a water system. Because softeners in reverse osmosis, is, they've been out for years. A softener pretty much changes your water from fresh water to salt water. Some softeners do have carbon in them. Well, that carbon goes out within a very short time and then you're left with the just the softener plastic resin and when resin goes bad it dissolves and plastic gets into your water reverse osmosis is, is very good water providing you want dead acidic water if you use it's very clean but you have to build it back up if you're going to put it in your body the healthiest thing that you can do is put a system that comes on the main line into your house that removes all the bad stuff and leaves the good. That's hard to do. Removing everything is easy, but it's not healthy water. Really, even the good minerals in the water to sustain life, you can feel the difference when you drink it. In fact, you can actually even taste the difference as well as it, distilled water, and reverse osmosis water, you can drink and drink and drink, and it does not seem to quench your thirst at all. Water with minerals in it, good healthy mineral water, does. Just remember that the disease-causing contaminants are found in most water supplies. Enter our bodies primarily through skin absorption and inhalation when we bathe or shower, not by drinking it. Stopping contaminants from entering your body 
could be one of the most effective and important steps that you could take to prevent the degenerate diseases related to poor health and aging. Water is the foundation of your body. And like any structure, if the foundation is of poor quality, the expectations of good health and longevity will not be fulfilled. Now, we've talked here tonight about a lot of different things. One we haven't talked a whole lot on is fluoride. I'm Dr. Bill Osmondson. I'm a general and cosmetic dentist and have been a dentist for 30 years. Before that, I received a master's in public health in nutrition and health education. For the first 25 years of practice, I promoted water fluoridation aggressively. I thought I saw the benefits. It wasn't until I actually looked at the information myself and sat down and looked at the different government agencies and the different reports and the studies that I began to realize that fluoridation was a problem. One of the first things I did is I looked at my tube of toothpaste. It says drug facts. I know it's a drug. If I were to give it to you, it'd have to be a prescription. That's for swallowing. When it comes to toothpaste, it also says don't swallow. And if you do swallow, contact a poison control center. Well, the amount of fluoride that they're talking about is a pea-sized amount of fluoride. You probably don't see that in, in, in advertisements, a pea-sized amount of fluorides. Usually when I see an advertisement, it looks more like a Dairy Queen ice cream cone. That amount is a quarter milligram of fluoride. Well, that's the same amount of fluoride as what we find in eight ounces of water. Quarter milligram of fluoride, quarter milligram of fluoride. Don't swallow. If you do, call the poison control center. The next thing I looked at was dental fluorosis. These are the white and brown spots on the teeth. The only thing that causes dental fluorosis is fluoride. Too much fluoride ingested, usually during the developing years, birth to about eight years of age. When I see people coming in to have treatment for dental fluorosis, I mention to them that they have had too much fluoride. And this is an indication that the rest of their body has probably had too much fluoride also. Their bones and in the rest of their organs. Damage from dental fluorosis is not disputed. Everyone agrees that too much fluoride can cause dental fluorosis. About one-third of children are now experiencing fluorosis, according to the CDC. The next thing I wanted to look at was benefits. What are the benefits of it? I've heard reports of 20 to 40 percent, 60 percent, 80 percent tooth reduction with water fluoridation. So what is the benefit of water fluoridation? And I had a close look at several factors. One, comparing different countries of the world, we can see that no matter what we do on fluoridation, whether the country fluoridates or no fluoride at all, decays reduce the same amount in all countries. We can compare states in the United States. And we can see on a graph that as they're plotted in order of increased amount of fluoridation in the state, fluoridation doesn't make any difference. We have the same amount of good health in the states regardless of their fluoridation. Same thing for counties and other locations. That was disturbing to me. If there's no benefit, well, why are we fluoridating? I have two requests for you. One is to talk to your dentist and your health care provider about fluoridation. Ask them if they've seen the National Academy of Science report on fluoridation. Give them information that they may not have on water fluoridation and excess fluoride exposure. That helped me when my patients casually, calmly, quietly said, have a look at this. This doctor, this dentist is concerned about water fluoridation. What do you think? None of us professionals want to harm our patients. Our whole lives are given to improving the health of people, not harming them. And so for those of you who are healthcare professionals, I highly urge you to look once again at the science on fluoridation. Science doesn't need to be scary. It's just information. Spend a little bit of time looking at it on both sides of the issues. Don't just look at one side filtered. Look at both sides and weigh it for yourself. The other thing is to sign an online petition with me at 
fluoridealert.org. The online petition requests Congress to have hearings on fluoridation. It also recommends that we no longer fluoridate our water. Thank you. Well, how'd you like what he had to say about the fluoride? Serious stuff, isn't it? But like I said, that's just one more contaminant in the water. There's a lot of contaminants in the water, the chlorine, the herbicides, the pesticides. I mean, just think. When you go into the grocery store down there at the uh, uh, any place where they sell uh, things for your garden, uh, things for bugs and termites and everything else, how many things are on those shelves? How many cleaning products are on the shelves in all the stores? Well, all of that stuff goes down the drain. All of it lands up into your water. That's why it is so important to get yourself educated when you're looking for a water system.